Welcome back to the real series of Dissect the Question. Let's get our scalpels out. The best use of this video is to pause it, try to answer the question, write your answer down with a brief explanation. Then restart the video and see whether your answer comports with ours. A new mother is told by a nurse in the obstetric unit that her two-day-old newborn has not passed the first stool and that an enema has not been effective. The mother is asked to provide consent for surgery to remove the impacted stool. She's told that her child's intestines are not moving, are paralyzed by impaction, a condition called meconium ileus, a defect in which of the following signaling molecules is the most likely cause of this baby's inability to pass the meconium. So, the question is straightforward. It's dealing with paralysis, ileus, smooth muscle paralysis in the gastrointestinal tract. So the first thing I'm going to do is look for something that's associated with the gastrointestinal tract specifically. CFTR jumps out at me because CFTR, the cystic fibrosis transmembrane regulator, is associated with a mutation that produces the disease known as cystic fibrosis. And although we think of cystic fibrosis as being disease mainly of the respiratory tract and thick mucus in the respiratory tract is the main defect that produces morbidity and mortality in cystic fibrosis patients. However, the name cystic fibrosis really comes from the appearance of the pancreas. It has a cystic appearance in cystic fibrosis, and cystic fibrosis is also a gastrointestinal disease. Wherever there's thick mucus, in fact, we can think of it being multi-systemic, so the thick mucus in the genitourinary tract can affect uh, a woman's ability to uh, conceive a child. Uh, thick mucus in the gastrointestinal tract can block meconium in this case. So this jumps out because cystic fibrosis is both a respiratory and a gastrointestinal disease. And I don't see what the other choices, beta-catenin, hedgehog, lipoprotein receptor related proteins or WINT, those are all embryogenesis signaling pathways, but nothing specific to the gastrointestinal tract in this manner as cystic fibrosis is. So how does this CFTR work? Here's the esophagus and we can draw a stomach and we're down here in the intestine, the CFTR is a chloride channel. It's a chloride channel. And chloride gets transported through the wall of the small intestines in the duodenum, for example, and onto the surface in the lumen where we have mucus being secreted. So here we have mucus glands and these mucus glands secrete, of course, the protein known as mucin, electrolytes, and among the electrolytes, we have chloride. So chloride ion keeps the mucus liquefied, and when there's inadequate transport of chloride ion, the mucus becomes thickened. So that's the major defect in cystic fibrosis, and if you think about how small the lumen is of a duodenum of a fetus, it's very, very small and it's easy to be blocked by thick mucus. And meconium then, the first stool is thickened and can't be passed in a normal bowel movement as occurs in a normal baby.